Hey, San Antonio, Duke Jonitz with the Beacon Report. Good morning, good night, good afternoon, whenever you're listening to this newscast. Um, I hope that, that Easter was something that was special for you guys. Certainly was for, for my family and for us. And just the, I don't know what you want to call it, the, 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 uh, the smell, the aroma of Easter being so close has got me stirred up. And I hope you're still stirred up out there as too. If you've never heard of the Beacon Report, we are San Antonio's only local Christian newscast. Uh, we feel like we have a couple of purposes. First, we act as a communication tool to keep you updated on all that God is doing across our city. Uh, I know that when I first got into ministry and God sort of ripped the veil and I, I began to see all these different ministries that he was working through, all the magnificent churches, I was blown away. I had no idea he's that busy. And we hope that we can give you that sense as well and encouragement uh, with two purposes in mind. First, we want to intentionally connect ministry efforts here in San Antonio to additional resources. Um, if I asked any executive director, hey, if you had another eight or ten thousand dollars or 10 or 12 volunteers, what would you do? And they're going to talk to me about strengthening an existing initiative or launching a new one. But the bottom line is they're going to change more lives. And so we hope that as you listen to some of these ministries, you'll support them. And two, how do we connect people to purpose? Believing that there are thousands in our city that would love to serve outside the four walls of the church, but they don't know who, how, or where. And the beacon, sabeacon.com is the place that you can go to, to learn more about connecting your passion to purpose. We are excited today about what's coming up and what God is doing in San Antonio. There are are three uh, significant activities, conferences, initiatives, all within the next three or four months that are coming. Uh, you probably have already heard about City Quake. We've done some reporting on that, which will take place in May. Today, we have another one of those three divine appointments with our city. Uh, Scott Dawson Evangelistic Association is coming to San Antonio to do some, some evangelistic training, some service projects, major, major outreach, stuff at the Alamo Dome. I mean, this is a big, big deal. And so we have in studio today, Andrew Waite, who is the student and evangelism associate with Scott Dawson Evangelistic Association and his compadre, uh, Josh Witt, who is the director of evangelism. Guys, welcome to the Beacon Report. Thanks, What's up, dude. What's up, San Antonio? We are glad to have you today. I guess we want to start kind of just helping people understand who is Scott Dawson Evangelistic Association. Yeah, uh, Scott Dawson Evangelistic Association uh, obviously was founded by Scott Dawson. Uh, Scott's been in the ministry for about 35 years now. We're based out of Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, Scott felt called as a, as a teenager uh, to just be an evangelist. And so he started almost in high school. Um, you know, God put it on his heart to, to just share Jesus anywhere and everywhere. And founded Scott Dawson Evangelistic Association. Um, basically, it was built on the platform of reaching young people, reaching youth. And so he wanted to reach his peers in that time. And so throughout the 35 years, uh, God has used Scott's platform or advanced God's platform and being able to reach you. Uh, but not only that, now moving into the area of just reaching anybody and everybody for the gospel in the name of Jesus Christ. And so um, that's that's who we are. That's what we do. What we like to do is go out. Uh, we have different events and different things that we put together that focus in on sharing the gospel. That is the main thing in anything and everything we do. But having the opportunity to just uh, provide a place, provide a, an event or whatever it may be for folks to get together. Uh, to grow in their faith, uh, but most importantly, for the folks who don't know Jesus to be able to do so, to have a chance to do so. Well, and I know that the, the, uh, we got to uh, stay tuned because you're going to want to hear some of these artists that are coming into San Antonio. There's going to be two major events held at the Alamo Dome. The dates are again? Uh, July 29th and 30th, Duke. 29th and 30th. I'll bet you they're free. Oh, they're absolutely free. Absolutely <laughs> Everything's free. free. All the way down to parking. That's the question we get a lot. Yeah, it's free, but I'm going to have to pay $40 for parking. You don't even have to pay for parking. If it's you got a question free. that night, the answer is free. That's right. That's, That's it. it. I love <laughs> it. Yeah, free, 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 right? Free, We're going to say that the rest of the news. Guys. Free, absolutely. Free. <laughs> so Alamo Dome, big crowds, big message, big artists, big names. 
and biggest name being Jesus. And you just heard it first here, San Antonio, everything is free. The event's free, the parking's free. There's no reason that you shouldn't be able to mark this on your calendar and be able to invite Absolutely. your neighbors, your friends. I mean, you need to start praying now. Lord, who is it that, that you want me to reach out to and yeah. be able to take part in, in what will be a great evening of worship, but more than that, someone that I know that doesn't know you or I'm not sure if they know you and be able to have that opportunity. But there's a second part, too, to what you guys are doing. And, and uh, that's really the part where the beacon sees this sort of a Kairos moment a special season in San Antonio where we really feel like God is building his army. Right. Uh, so City Quake and their group was a part of that. You guys obviously are, are a part of that as well. So in addition to the major outreach events, there is more than that going on. Andrew, can you tell us more about what happens prior to the events? Yeah. So yeah, the second element of what we're doing out here, Duke, uh, really the dates are July 27th through the 30th and the big, aspect that we feel most called to that's very important to us is called STS Mission. Uh, that STS stands for Strength to Stand, and it operates under the umbrella of Scott Dawson Evangelistic Association. And here's what's happening. So we're going to come out, and Wednesday night, we're going to have a kickoff party for STS Mission. Simply, we're going to get anybody and everybody that wants to register to come uh, this week to this evangelism conference that we're putting on leading up to Unite. Uh, we're going to have a little kickoff party, let everybody get to meet us and meet each other. But then those mornings following that Wednesday night, that Thursday, Friday, Saturday morning is going to be an evangelism conference. And essentially what I mean by that is they're going to come in and they're going to get uh, some good worship. They're going to get a message to grow in their personal faith. Um, Scott, the first will be the first speaker up, and he's going to actually present the gospel because he has a philosophy. You can't share what you don't have. And so we're hoping that anybody that comes and is a part of STS mission that doesn't know Jesus uh, will will get to know him and then immediately have an opportunity not only to grow in their faith, but then to share that life changing event that happened in their life when they met Jesus. And so uh, that again, Thursday, Friday, Saturday morning, we're going to actually have hands on training for each and every person in that room. How do you share your faith? How do you overcome some of those fears and obstacles that may be in your life that you would say, I don't know if I can share my faith. Or I don't know if I'm good enough to share my faith. We want to work through those. Uh, and we're going to have, again, some hands-on practical training for that. And then here's the best part, Duke. We don't stop there. We're going to feed you lunch right after the, the little conference in the morning. And then we are going to connect with so many ministries across San Antonio to put that training into action in real time. So we're going to see people hitting the streets, sharing their faith, serving in the city of San Antonio, uh, again, practicing and putting into play what they're learning in this evangelism conference. Well, it sounds like if, if there is a youth group perhaps here in the city, uh, maybe a business that we're looking at planning to take a mission trip somewhere, you can save them some money because they can take a mission trip right here in San Antonio right here. and participate in these local activities and make a difference right here in their city. And, you know, one of the things that I, I just want to tear down is uh, there, there's, and, I, and I'm as guilty as anyone else, there's, there's always this thought that there's two meetings that nobody comes to a church, right? Prayer meeting and evangelism meeting. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Nobody wants to show up. That's right. That's right. It's going to tear down that that uh, spirit, right, of fear that sometimes Absolutely. can enter in. Uh, you know, what we're believing is that God is simply going to ask you, San Antonio, to take one step of faith. That's right. Just one step to be able to show up on Wednesday at this very first event and then take the next step as God leads you. Uh, you know, sharing your faith shouldn't be scary. It should be fun. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Right. And I think that's a lot of what you guys are probably going to do in the way of training. Is that right, Andrew? Oh, absolutely. And yeah. I will say this too, just to add to what Andrew said. So our heart right now too, where we are built off of being a, a youth, uh, youth oriented uh, association with STS mission, 
we have actually just kind of prayed about it and had a lot of folks say, hey, do we have some adults that want to be able to learn how to share their faith? And so clarity of knowing this is not just a youth thing. Yeah, yeah. STS mission is for any youth and adults. Yeah. So youth, college, adults, um, that, that's what it's for, that want to learn how to grow in their faith and have opportunities to go and do that. So we want to be clear in, in everyone knowing that this yeah. is not just for you. So if you're a pastor, this is what occurs to me. If you're a pastor out there listening in, I hope that you can see that what God's bringing to San Antonio with Josh and Andrew and Scott Dawson is really a tool for you to be able to, to, to use in helping disciple your congregation. Absolutely. So yes, it's absolutely. certainly one, uh, awesome that you're able to teach or have training in evangelism in your own church. But with these mission projects, they're going to be providing you and your congregation with an opportunity to step out and actually apply. Absolutely. For learning. Uh, secondarily, if you're a ministry leader here in San Antonio and all of a sudden you're going, wow, wouldn't that be awesome to have a team of people come in for two or three days and be able to help us reach more people in our community? Either way, how would somebody get a hold of you guys? Yeah, I would say, um, you know, the easiest way to do it is to go to our website, UniteSDA.org. And so, um, again, if you go to UniteSDA.org, there's a place that says partner. Mm -hmm. And when you click on partner, you will see the different options that are there in order to join us for SDS mission, be a part of the evangelism training. Uh, Duke, we're also opening up the opportunity where some folks may not want to do the evangelism training or maybe the timing doesn't work out. They can't do the mornings, but they can do the afternoons and they want to be part of just the, the serve day, serve mentality. So we're even allowing uh, people the opportunity to sign up to just come serve that day and be a part of loving on the, the community. Um, the other part there is that there are different ministries out there that want folks to come help them um, there's a place to sign up for that as well and um, then the last part that you'll see on the partner section is being an encourager what we want um, I'm kind of moving away from the STS mission part for a second but the unite event that we do Friday night and Saturday night there will be Scott will give an invitation and our prayer is that there are just a, a mass wave of folks that come forward to make a decision for Christ and yeah. so we want as many uh, what we call encouragers, volunteers who are willing to be there so that when a person comes forward and makes a decision for Christ, it's a one-to-one -one opportunity for somebody to counsel, love on, pray for somebody that's made that decision. Yep. And, um, and so we have an opportunity for you to, to be a part of that as well. Um, and so you can get a, you can get all that at the website, um, or you can also email. Um, I know hopefully at the end of this, there'll be some opportunities where our info will flash up J Witt, W H I T T at scottdawson.org or Andrew Waite, A Waite, W A I T E, yeah. at scottdawson.org. And really, they can just reach out and say, hey, I'm interested in this i'm interested in that tell me about it what do we do and and you know we will we will follow up next yeah. steps and give me the website address one more time unite U I E U N U N I T E S D E A dot org right there you go and do even i'll plug this as well if you got if anybody out there wants to know just more about what we do and even see some of the things we've done in the past you can go to scottdawson.org and that is our picture of our whole ministry. Absolutely. Um, just to see, you know, obviously we do this, like we talked about a little bit earlier, just we do a couple of other things and other events. So if you want to know more about who we are, why we do what we do, scottdawson.org, but about Unite, about STS Mission, you hit that unite sda.org and you're going to find it all there. Absolutely. Well, and obviously this is not y'all's first rodeo. <laughs> yes. No, we've not at all. Do it for a little bit. <laughs> this has been developed and tweaked and over tweaked and tweaked again, I'm sure, a hundred of times after all these events that you guys hold. I mean, is there a particular testimony from either one of you guys that comes to mind, maybe first on the service side of some something that really changed a believer's life or somebody that came to serve? And then perhaps a, another testimony on somebody that received Christ at one of the service projects. Yeah. So I, I can speak to really, I can speak to both and you might have one on the other one. Yeah, too, go ahead. But, no, you got it. But uh, I know there were several students. So we did a, this same event, do a very similar event in Las Vegas last summer. Um, and so in Sin City, and it was just incredible. God showed up, God showed out. We had uh, so many people just to make decisions for Jesus, but even more, 
I got to see people serve and be on the streets and witness and share their faith. And so a couple of students from some of our uh, southeastern churches who actually are going to travel with us. We have some church partners in the southeast that will travel out here this summer to San Antonio to okay. partner with us in this effort. Uh, one of those students uh, that came out here had never really done much in the church. He'd never really done much uh, about sharing his faith or anything like that. And so he came in and did the evangelism conference, had some doubts, had some fears. But as soon as we got them out on the street, uh, this kid went from not wanting to share his faith at all to literally, and I'm not joking, like itching to get out and share his faith. And so uh, we got to see him talk to several different people on the street. But my favorite part of that story is that the, uh, the, the Unite event that night in uh, Las Vegas, the second night we were doing it, uh, he was just kind of looking out. Uh, in the crowd, and it was kind of towards the end, end of the invitation. He looked out in the crowd and saw a um, locked eyes with a lady, and he just told us when he was telling us the story, he said, I felt like God was telling me she needed Jesus, and so he, this this maybe, I think, 11, 12-year-old boy, tiny boy, too, goes out <laughs> into the crowd and grabs this woman and just asks her, do you want to know Jesus, and Duke led this woman to Jesus at 12 years old, and so you want to know about the power of training even our youngest students, but not even just our younger students, anybody and everybody who is a believer, the power of training them to share their faith and knowing that we have authority that Christ has given us to carry the gospel message forward is in itself life changing. Mm-hmm. And so you saw that it just brought tears to my eyes watching that and witnessing that. Wow. And on the flip side, you know, you were talking about somebody that was impacted by this event. There was actually a, a guy that second night as well. Um, who I was I happened right in front of my eyes. And one of, again, some students who came to serve with us and were actually locally serving with us as well, who uh, came forward and said, and this is just in full honesty, that he was a homosexual. He had grown up, he had grown up and, and had not the best background, but he had stepped into homosexuality, was living with another partner. And uh, he said, I came here tonight, not knowing where I was going to be ending up. Um, not knowing about what my future looked like, just having some doubts. And he encountered Jesus that night. And we've actually followed up with that story. And we know that now he has stepped out of homosexuality back into uh, his identity in Christ and is uh, is moving in a different direction. Thank God for uh, for his kingdom and, and is very involved in the church that he's involved in now. So uh, you're talking about real life in real time life change happening, you, you're going to see that happen. And Absolutely. I can tell you, there's really honestly no words for it. Yeah. There's no words for it. You're right there in terms of just right in front of us, uh, you know, a life is changed and transformed. Yeah. And, and what I want our audience to hear as well is, look, you're not going to be just be pushed out into these service projects and on the streets. Yeah. Um, that would make, I would be afraid, you know, if that were the way that they were operating. Right. You know, right. <laughs> they're going to hold your hand. They're going to train you. Yeah on how to share your faith in an effective way. It's not going to be something that you force on anyone. It's coming from a place of compassion and love. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be fear. I, I, uh, the million things that you think in your head are going to happen, right? That you're worried about or anxious. Well, they're going to ask me a theological question and I'm not going to know the answer. Right. No, they're not. Well, they're going to say that they had a bad experience in church and I'm not going to know how to answer that. Yes, you are. Mm-hmm. Right. And so every one of those questions that you're having as you as you get anxiety over this, just know it's the enemy trying to take you down a rabbit yeah, trail. So you'll great. say no. And just tell him, you know what, I'm stepping up this time. Right. I'm going to say yes. And I'm going to learn how to share my faith. And again, it's both adults and youth that mm-hmm. are able to take advantage of this opportunity. Uh, so, again, mission trip right here in San Antonio for you locally. Uh, Josh, maybe tell us a little bit. So we've got the service part of it, training and going out in the city to really make a difference and share their faith. And then there's the big evangelistic events on Friday and Saturday night. Uh, Talk to us about just some of the Christian artists that are coming to those two events. Gotcha. So um, basically the layout for Friday night, we have a a partner with us. DJ Morph will be a guy that really kind of sets the stage and, and gets things started for us as the crowd comes in. Uh, doors will be basically it will start 6 30 um and so we'll have folks come in find their seat again being free general admission when you come where you sit uh, it's all, yeah when you come and, and where you end up but we have um passion we have christine DeClario. we have uh finishing the night for king and country um amongst those three scott dawson will give uh, an invitation 
And, and that's, again, Duke, I want to stress that in anything and everything we do, evangelism is the most important. That's Jesus true. is the most important. So although we have a phenomenal lineup, our prayer that night is that God uses all of the pieces to stir hearts so that they, uh, the folks that are there who don't know Jesus had the opportunity to hear that message, receive that message and, and make a life changing decision for him. And uh, so that's kind of the components to the first night. Evan Kraft is an artist that uh, is going to MC for us both nights. And so he'll be there uh, Friday night as well, just kind of leading uh, throughout but then turns around on Saturday night. Saturday night, Evan's not only going to MC again, but he's also going to be part of a concert. So he's going to do his own thing as well. Um, Saturday night, we have uh, Evan Kraft. Then after Evan Kraft, we have, um, who's the second uh, one there? Crowder. Crowder. And then we finish the night with Chris Tomlin. Yep. And so that's the Saturday night set once again. Um, Scott giving an invitation. And we do, we believe that all pieces lead to that that avenue of people hearing the name of Jesus and, and coming forward to, to make that decision. Well, yeah, I can I already sort of hear people getting excited, yeah. particularly yeah. about the names that, that you're bringing in. I mean, these are all well-known Christian music artists. So please don't get the wrong idea. This is not an entertainment gathering through Correct. Yes. your concert. Correct. It's not that. I will promise you, because God has set this all up, that there are going to be some songs that are going to be played by this artist that are going to be the perfect song for the person that you invited because they're dealing with something in their own life right then. Absolutely. And that song will minister to them. And then as that takes place, they have an opportunity to hear the gospel and respond. So don't think great worship time. Think, hey, this is an opportunity for me to be able to pray about who I'm going to invite and take down to the Alamo on that Friday and Saturday. Yes. Absolutely. That would be a stressing point for us, Duke, is yeah. that this is not just a, a gathering celebration of believers. That is that is a piece of it. We want that. But most importantly, again, it comes back to the evangelism tool. This is another resource and opportunity for you to grab some friends yeah. that are lost and bring them with you because it will be a an environment conducive to family. So they may have kids. Bring the kids. Um, anybody and everybody's invited. It the, the ability to come to something that's free. You know, I, with my own family, I have three kids and just to go to the movies, I'm going to have to fork out a hundred dollars or more than that. It's crazy. And so there's not a lot of, it'll take you a hundred bucks just to get there now with the absolutely. price of that's, right? like in, that's not even snacks, that's getting the right? popcorn. So it, there are not even, uh, even being able to take your family to a concert of one yep. of these artists um, would cost a, a fair share of money. And so this is a, a very good opportunity for you to, to bring your family and be a part, but more important, bring a family that doesn't know Jesus. That's that, yes. um, you know, maybe somebody in the neighborhood that you're just starting to get to know somebody that's moved in. You don't know yeah. where they are. Um, it, it's an invitation opportunity. And that really is a stressing point for us. We don't want to fill the dome with believers. We want to fill the dome with folks who need to know the name of Jesus yeah. so that they can have the life change that, uh, that ultimately is what, what our life is all about. And I'll say this too, dude, I, I'm thinking, you know, and this is just an encouragement to everybody that's watching right now. I mean, start thinking of those three people, those three people yeah. in your life. If everybody that came got three people, brought three people that needed to know Jesus, you're talking about having believers be in the hands and feet of Jesus, but you're talking about filling the Alamo with them with hearts that need to be saved and then watching in real time, God, God do what only he can do. So that's my encouragement as you hear the heart behind it. Absolutely. Everybody that's watching, everybody's thinking, oh, I would love to go to that because, you know, passion is going to be there or whatever. Like, know that, yeah, that's great, but bring three people. I, everybody knows at least three people that need to know Jesus. You've come into contact. You are a part of a family. You have friends that need to know Jesus. Bring three. And that three will multiply over the amount of people that will be there that night into Absolutely. a ton of people that are going to be in a, a place and in a conducive environment where an encounter with Jesus is going to happen. And so, right. so I'm going to give you an opportunity now, right? So let's help even our audience at this point. Yep. Can you model for me what an invitation to a neighbor or a friend or a business associate uh, or my, my friend that I went to school with, what that invitation might sound like? All right, you, I'll be the guy that you're inviting. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you know, I'll go back to it. I think this, I'm going to say what Andrew said. You know, we all, 
are building relationships. And so, you yeah. know, you may have only known somebody for a couple of days and even Andrew and I, we've only, we've been together less than a year. And yeah. So believe funny. it or not, <laughs> the more time you spend with people, the more, right. the, the bigger the opportunity to get to know them. And so I think that the invitation opportunity is more of just a simple, Hey, you know, what do you, what do you got going on Friday night? What do you got going on Saturday night? Listen, here's there's a, a thing, cool going, thing going on, going on, on down at the Alamo Dome that I would love for you to come with. Look, you don't have to pay any money for anything. So we're not buying a ticket. I'm going to come get you. We're going to go to dinner. We're going to get something to eat. And then we're going to go over to the Alamo Dome and we're going to have a good time. And in a way that doesn't uh, come at them from a, a standpoint yes. of, listen, you are – you need Jesus <laughs> and I'm dragging you with me yeah. to this event right. because you need it. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh, and, oh yeah. And so I think it's just the expectation of saying, Hey, um, you know, there's this thing going on at the Alamo dome. And, and most of the time, even when you say Alamo dome, I think that's, that's big. It's one of the pieces that we prayed about in terms of how to, you know, where do we want to do this? What kind of opportunity is going to be there for the Alamo dome? One of the reasons we chose it and love it is that we're not restricted in the number. And so we know God is going to send his number there. And we want to provide the, the largest amount of people possible mm -hmm. to be there. And we feel like that's why God's provided the Alamo dome as, as the setting. And so that should be another encouragement for folks that, Hey, we're not going to a place that's going to pack us in. And, you know, we, that that's where it's at and that's where it's done. We're going to have the opportunity to, you know, invite more than one person. You can, like he said, invite three people because yeah. um, it, it just, it's that type of an opportunity and that type of environment. And Duke, I'll say this, just be for anybody out there and talking about inviting people, be the conduit for it. Don't try to go into a conversation like Josh was saying, saying, you know, trying on your own power to go, you need Jesus. You yeah, need to no. come to this thing. Jesus operated in relationships. I mean, right. you look at him and his 12 disciples for three years, they just operated out of relationships. And so if you're having a conversation with somebody, don't try to do on your own power what God's trying to do through you in his power. OK, and so just be that conduit, you know, be a conduit, build a relationship. And like Josh said, I mean, for us, it's just, hey, Alamo yeah. Dome, what are you doing that night? It's and gonna I be fun. I will say this too, dude. It's May the fifth. So if anything, right now, whoever your three people are, if you don't have them, start right now, May the fifth, and begin building that relationship so that when there July 29th and 30th gets here, it's an easier opportunity and they're more likely to come with you because you've grown in that relationship. I to me personally, that's different than me having a one-day relationship with Andrew and saying, Hey man, we're going to this thing tomorrow night. He doesn't know me. There's, yeah, there's not skin in the game with both of us there in the relationship so that the response from him is probably going to be a little bit more hands up. Dude, I don't even know you. I'm not going somewhere with you. I don't know you yet. Yeah. So you have plenty of time right now, May, June, July, to build that relationship so I that it makes the, it a little bit easier. The charcoal and the charcoal yeah. light be yes. putting exactly. drills all over the city right now to be able to yeah. invite those neighbors over this Absolute the barbecue. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Great point is, is to be able to nurture the relationship first. Mm -hmm. And then it'll come um, as an opportunity for you just to love on someone. Right. 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 And, and, and I think an important other part of another aspect of that is to be able to pray for them before you, you, you know, make the invite. Absolutely. If you don't Absolutely. know what to say, just open your mouth. The Holy Spirit will say it for you. Absolutely. Right? Just open your mouth and he'll say it for you. So San Antonio, big things happening. You have the opportunity to be able to train yourself on how to share your faith. Um, nothing, nothing can compare to God being able to transform a life through, through you individually. There's nothing like it to be able to experience his power and his love and his compassion for those that you visit with. And right. then the opportunity to be able to come to a big event, invite those that you love, that you begin to know, those that God puts on your heart to come with you and your family, to listen to some music and hear some talks that may be life-changing. That's right. Um, we need you to step up. These guys need you to step up. Can't wait until we get to July. We're going to be praying for you guys, Josh and Andrew, in the meantime. And we're going to have more messages uh, on sabeacon.com right. about these July activities to keep you alert. All the emails and, and the websites that we've talked about online are posted with this, this newscast. So, you know, if you didn't grab a pen and say, wait, wait a minute, what's the website again? We'll have that up for you as well. Perfect. Thanks for your time. Can't wait. I'm excited about July and everything that's coming. 
it's going to be hot. And I don't mean San Antonio <laughs> hot from a weather standpoint, but from a Holy Ghost standpoint, it's going to right. be higher. And so uh, right. either one of you guys, if you just want to close this out in prayer, that'd be great. Absolutely. Absolutely. Got you, Duke. Hey, before you do that, Duke, we want to say thank you for, for yes. allowing us the opportunity to oh, be yeah. right here as well again. And so we uh, we love what you do. We're thankful for what you do and how God is continuing to use you in the beacon as well. So just thank you for the opportunity right here as well. Absolutely. Bye -bye. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's pray, guys. And Father, we just thank you. Um, we just we're blown away at what you're doing uh, in real time as we speak right now in this city. And Father, we just are humbled that uh, we get to come together uh, as brothers and sisters in Christ uh, to to complete the calling that you've put on us, which is simply go, uh, go and tell the nations about me, go and tell the world about who I am and the love that I have for my people. And so, Father, we're just so humbled and blown away uh, that you have given us the not only the opportunity, but the authority and the power to, to carry that out. And so, Father, I just pray uh, over this city, Father, as we um, as we're coming to do Unite and STS Mission, Father, would you just pave the way uh, for things to happen in this city, for people to come together, for, for a spark uh, to be ignited in this city to where the Holy Spirit is just burning every uh, from every corner of every place in this yes. city. Father, when we, when we step into game time, as we step into that week, Father, we just pray that there will be a sense of peace that transcends all understanding as far as being able to learn how to share your faith and then going and doing it. And Father, I would pray ahead of time that you would prepare hearts and prepare those divine appointments and those people that are that the people that will be trained to share their faith will run into. And Father, I just pray for real time salvations in those moments for for people to be on the outside witnessing what God is doing in somebody else's life and, and just wondering and out of curiosity what that is. And then ultimately come to a position where they accept Jesus as well. And so if I pray for the, the three days of training and just on the streets, hands on real time faith sharing. And then Father, I pray for the Alamo Dome. Uh, Father, that's that is that is a place in which you are going to be lifted up, but also that. Uh, the enemy is going to lose. He's going to lose. He's going to lose souls to your victory. And so, Father, I just pray uh, from every artist to Scott's message, to the interviews, to anything that's happening that night in the Alamo Dome. Father, would it just be under your blessing and under your favor, Father? Would you just send your Holy Spirit to descend upon that place that night? And again, we're just praying for real time salvations, for your name to be glorified in that place. And Father, I just pray outside of Unite, outside of STS Mission, when, when this is all said and done with, that it wouldn't be another thing that was just done, that we wouldn't look back in history and say, oh yeah, that thing happened. But this would be an ongoing uh, fire that continued oh, yeah. to burn of the Holy Spirit, that we see uh, churches coming together to unite literally together in their city, doing things to spread the gospel, that we would see San Antonio become a beacon, would become a hot spot, would become a capital of the Christian faith in this world. And so, Father, I just pray that in the name of Jesus, we thank you for these opportunities. Mm -hmm. It's in your name. Amen. Amen. Brother. So, San Antonio, there's a glory cloud coming. That's right. And, and you have an opportunity to either stay away from it Mm -hmm. or walk into it with, a, with hands and hearts um, and heads wide open for everything that God wants to do, to be able to have that aroma of Christ come into our city, get involved, reach out to the beacon. If you have any questions, all of the contact information is on the video. Thank you again, guys, for coming. We'll be back soon, San Antonio, with another beacon report. God bless you. Thanks, sir.